Hello, I've been doing IRL streaming for a while and I thought I would share the hardware setup for my IRL streaming rig. And I sometimes use my phone and when I do that, I use a whole bunch of other stuff, but I also sometimes use this stuff. This is a Bellabox system with a Sony cam. And I think what I'm gonna do is start at the camera and then work my way backwards into the guts to explain how I have everything set up. And it uh, looks kind of nuts, but it works really well. <laughs> <laughs> and it's slowly getting better as technology catches up with uh, IRL stuff and we find new ways to do things. My camera is a Sony AS300. It's one of the two Sony cameras that will work good for IRL because it has built-in optical stabilization, not just digital stabilization. And to me, it makes the image look a lot better than digital stabilization, especially when you end up filming or live streaming in low light, this thing still looks awesome. The type of live streaming that I do is walking around. I do photography live streams. For those homies out there that are into kitties. I do just city walking live streams and I do motorbike live streams. And that's where this thing really shines. I think its stabilization is awesome for motorbiking. And again, I can motorbike at night and it's illuminated enough for everybody to see what's going on. For me, this AS300 is amazing. It's very reliable. You turn it on, it's perfect. The problem, of course, that many people have is that you have to run cabling into them to keep the HDMI signal coming out and also to power the device. And the ports on the, these cameras is not, it's not what it's designed for. So I've got a case made by IRL Tools. This case protects the lens from smacking into something and you can upgrade this if you want, but for my uses, this is pretty good. It gives you the opportunity to put a little wind muff on there, which works for walking streams, but it doesn't do me any good for motorcycling streams because the wind like goes straight in at 60 miles an hour, it doesn't work. And then the main purpose of the IRL tools case is that it allows you to put the cables in and then use these little screws that then hold the cables in place so that there's not pressure and stuff put onto the ports on the camera and it keeps everything from breaking. So it's like extends the life of the camera. I see people walking around with just cables plugged straight in the camera with no casing and it's just like, ooh, <laughs> guys, it's not gonna be good. So these cases are great. Uh, they're made by a couple of other people. This is the one that I have familiarity with and they work really well. I'd suggest them for sure. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not just trying to pimp out IRL tools, but these things are good. So uh, they do have recently made an upgrade though, which I wish I had because I wish this was completely covered, which is what their new one does. And I wish it was all black because this white one, when it's mounted on your shoulder walking around, really sticks out. Everybody looks at the camera and they know what you're doing. And I wish it was a little more incognito. So maybe I'll upgrade and I'll get a black one instead. I don't know, we'll see. Moving on from there, I personally end up using GoPro clips, like quick releases, because the third party ones that you can get are cheap and they're reliable. And I have them kind of on a bunch of other devices and stuff that I end up using this for. And I make YouTube videos, so I have live streaming stuff and I have YouTube video stuff and blah, blah, blah. It's just kind of the ecosystem that I'm in for my quick releases. Uh, it makes it a little bit tall. And I think that with other quick release systems, you might be able to build a system that's a little shallower, like uh, might be a little more effective, but for what I have, this is just the ecosystem I'm in. Um, I do end up having this clipped in a couple of different ways, and I will explain that to you in a moment. Uh, but moving on from there, I have set my system up so that I can unplug my cables from my camera to make my camera loose. A lot of people take their HDMI cable and they just have it in completely and it's it's what's bolted in. But I wanted to be able to take this in and out because I use this camera for more than live streaming. I take this and I film with it sometimes. So I needed this to be a little bit more mobile, but some people will have like their two meter cable or whatever, like a permanently attached, basically permanently attached, screwed in to this casing. Personally, I wanted to be able to remove it. So I ended up getting this little HDMI adapter that then goes in here and then the power cable, uh, the power plug on the camera is actually micro USB, which oh, fuck micro USB. <laughs> so I got a micro USB to USB-C adapter so I could use just a USB-C cable and then it just makes everything a little more standard in the sense of how it goes into my system and everything. And I like that I can just get it in and out. Adds a little bit of bulk though. You could l eliminate a little bit of this up there if you were willing to permanently affix your cabling. 
Some people will also take and put hot glue into things to keep things a little better. Like maybe you could hot glue in these screws. I've never had them come out, so it hasn't been a big deal. I haven't really worried about it, but that's just another thing. To keep those two cables together, I've got a meshing, um, like a mesh cable stuff. I don't really know what the proper wordage for this is, but it's like a mesh tubing that you can use to keep the cables together. And then I just used some electrical tape up at the top to just keep everything kind of together, like tightly and in a good place. That's been really good. It stayed in place. And uh, yeah, this has been a nice addition. So I don't usually run off the microphone here, but periodically I do. Uh, the microphone has got quite a loud volume and it sounds pretty clean and clear and it's a decent microphone. And even if it's mounted on your shoulder with your voice going this way, it does a good job of picking them up. So we live in Tachikawa and I feel like Hachioji is kind of the Shelbyville <laughs> to our Tachikawa. So the onboard mic is good, but like I said, I do some streams where I'm doing photography where I want to get away from the mic uh, camera system sometimes so people can see me take pictures or I am on a motorbike and you can't use this on a motorbike obviously because wind and stuff and it wouldn't pick up your mic through the helmet. So the audio system that I use is a DJI wireless system and I have quite enjoyed it. I think it's really good. So I wear one DJI mic around my neck and I found this little like necklace thing that just like clips into place and it's really nice because I don't want the DJI mic tugging on my mink like pulling on my shirt like dra dragging it down like that my shirts are too dope so I wear it on this necklace and uh it's a good to me this is like a really comfortable way to wear the mic and this is the little mic and uh, as you can see it has a dead cat on it so that this does a really good job of protecting from the wind. And in the DJI system, you can also turn on a limiter to limit the low end. So it does a low end cut a little bit. So if you're really worried about wind, you can add that as well and it does help. And you can adjust uh, each one of the microphones because you can run two microphones into the system at the same time. You can adjust each one's volume gain independently of each other, which is really handy and I'll explain how that helps me out a lot here. So when I'm walking around, this is the mic that I use. And it's just here, looks a little weird, but it gets the job done. And I can walk away from the um, camera system. Like I could put it on a tripod and walk away from it and get quite a distance away and it works fine. The only issue that I run into periodically with the DJI system is every once in a while, because they run on the 2.4 gigahertz uh, transmission wireless band, you end up getting a little bit of distortion in the mic system if you're around a lot of wireless transmission. So that is a thing that I've run into a bit. Uh, there's nothing you can really do about it. And most of these wireless systems run on, a, on the same system. So that's just what it is. The other microphone that I use is this one and I run it in conjunction with a lavalier microphone and it gets put into my motorcycle helmet. Oh, by the way, I do do cycling streams sometimes. This is what I use for the cycling streams. Works fine. Like just here, it's no problem. Even the, the every once in a while moves like this, it's not a big deal. Um, if I don't want this weight on me, I will use a lav mic because you can plug a lav mic directly into one of these. And then I will then put this in my pocket. And that gives you a much more lightweight system if you're worried about like any bonking sounds. But this hasn't really, nobody's complained. So it seems all right. Um, but yeah, a little lav mic you can get for like 10 bucks or something, it's not a big deal. So anyway, speaking of lav mics, I have a lav mic mounted inside of my motorcycle helmet. And that is what this guy is here. And I've wired it through the padding, which is clips on my particular helmet. It's not hard to do. And then I've got this cable that dangles down. Then I wire it directly into the DJI mic and put the DJI mic in my pocket. And what is beneficial about this is like I was saying, I can run these at different gains. So I set this one at negative 12 and I set this one at plus four. And the reason being is because the microphone that is inside of my helmet is so incredibly close to my mouth that if I don't do a gain dip on the microphone there, it just peaks. So the thing that's handy about that is that when I wanna switch microphones, get off, the mic get off the motorcycle, all I have to do is turn off this microphone and turn on this microphone and boom, I'm going. It's hard to get these things leveled in a way <laughs> where the volume inside of OBS is right. I'm still kind of tweaking that out with limiters and gains and I'm working on it. But this is the best thing that I've come up with so far. Ideally, I would like to have a microphone that could sit inside of my helmet that could accept loud volume coming out of my face and output it at a standard level into the line. 
but I haven't found anything yet. Probably something that exists. It's just not something that I've come across quite yet, but this idea works great. And then I'm not wired to the camera or anything, which is good because less wires going to the camera. Just It's just more annoying stuff. And um, the other thing is that the microphone input on the Sony camera is really, really hot. So you would almost have to have something in line that would lower the output volume of any of your microphones before it went into the Sony because it'll peak. It's just like a quirk of these little Sony cameras. Fun stuff, right? Everything's a problem. So anyway, I can wear this, got the microphone, and that's how I do audio on the motorcycle. And like I said, just hop off, turn this one on. I'm rolling again. Makes everything really simple. All right, scene change. Let's go into the bag. And for this purpose, I'm gonna just dis disconnect the Sony cam so it doesn't fall on the ground or get knocked around or whatever. So again, it's handy that I can unplug that. And let's jump into the bag where the encoder is, the modem is, and the battery is, and the wireless receiver is, and all those good things. This bag is a bag for a medical device, actually. And it is something you can get on Amazon for like, I don't know, 50 bucks or something. They're not ridiculously expensive. What's cool about it is it's made of a lot of mesh. So this allows airflow to come through the bag and you don't have to rig anything up. And I've run this in Japanese summers, like hot Japanese summers with no problems. And it's been totally fine. There's no fans aside from the fan that's built into my Bellabox B. So it's been wonderful. The bag is mostly comfortable. It's not like super comfortable and it's fairly compact, which is good because it's exactly the size that I need for the encoding and all the batteries and everything without being really bulky. Uh, the only issue is if you wanna carry extra stuff, it could be complicated. You might well have to bring another bag, which I do carry a smaller bag on me as well for my lenses when I'm doing photography. One, because it's kind of hard to fit everything in here. Two, because once it's on your back, it's hard to get things in and out. So if you need something accessible, whatever. This is good for the encoder and everything. I do keep my wallet in here and I'll show you what this all looks like on me and practically how everything functions once we move a little bit further along. But let's jump inside the bag and I will show you how everything is wired. So one thing that's cool about the bag that isn't as cool as I hoped is it does have these input output areas where people can run tubing for their medical devices, but the HDMI cables don't fit through the hole. <laughs> if you're using micro HDMI, it might, micro HDMI, is it micro, is that mini, micro, whatever, the small one that is actually built into this camera, it might work, but I use full size HDMI because I want all my streaming stuff to be compatible with that camera you're looking at me on now, which has full size HDMI. And let's be honest, full size HDMI is better. So they don't fit through there. So I thought, oh, it's gonna be cool. I'm gonna run the cables, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Opening the bag up is pretty simple. It's got some nice zippers. They've never caught on me or anything. They work totally fine and gets us into where I keep the encoder and the battery. And this is the Bella Box B. And as you can see at the moment, it's all wired up and ready to go and I will take it all apart and I'll show it to you briefly. So this thing is pretty small and even if you can't get your hands on a bee, which they're amazing, you will be able to build something similar to this in size using Orange Pi 5 Plus because it also has an HDMI input and I'm not sure the exact dimensions, but it'll give you roughly the same experience that I'm getting out of this because you don't have to have a cam link. Cam link would make this a little more clumsy. You would still be able to do it with this bag, but this makes it super clean. And I have taken some 3M dual lock. It's basically super strong Velcro. And I placed it onto the Bella box and then onto the DJI wireless receiving unit so that I can just put the DJI unit on there and it stays put and doesn't like bounce around or whatever. You could do the same thing with a cam link, I suppose, if you were doing that. And then I took this cable tie thing, crimp it down, and then it holds all my power cables that are a little bit too long in place, and also the cables for the USB that goes into the wireless audio system. So basically the wireless DJI system goes from these wireless mics and it goes into this, this picks them up and turns it into a audio signal that goes into the USB line of the Bella box. So all I do is run a USB-C to USB standard cable and that goes into one of the USB ports. This is cool because the power management inside of the B is good enough that it keeps everything charged 
including the audio system. So I don't have to worry about like any sort of weird wiring or using a powered USB hub or anything like that. This thing will stay charged up the entire time that I stream. I do 12 hour streams sometimes and it like drains like 1% an hour or something, but it's like, it's fine. You know what I mean? Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna be in a situation where you're gonna be awake long enough to drain down the battery here. So it's all good. The Next thing that I have in here is just the power cable. On the B, it's a barrel cable, which is kind of a bummer. I wish it was this USB-C because it would be more standard. One end is a barrel cable, the other end is a USB-C cable. And that is the whole encoding system. Apologies if you're not familiar with how this stuff works at a basic level. This is basically a device that just takes the video signal and the audio signals from my camera and my microphone system and then puts them into a compressed video signal, sends them over the internet over multiple cellular devices, and then it gets ingested into the internet, built into a data stream, pushed into OBS, and then gets sent to Twitch through that. So basically it gives you data redundancy. If you have one of your cellular signals drops, then it can use the other one, or it can combine them together to get more data over low bandwidth situations, and it does it with an efficient video bit rate. That's basically what's going on with this thing. <laughs> it solves a lot of problems with IRL streaming in the end. The other thing that I've got here is of course my HDMI cable, and this is a input that is coming from the Sony camera that I showed earlier. So that goes into this. And then I have a, another cable down here that is a USB cable that goes into another one of the USB ports. So I plug this in and it goes into a modem. And the modem that I use is an SH52B. It's from Docomo. I live in Japan, so that's one of the better modems to have. And it conveniently fits perfectly inside this mesh pocket on the side of the bag. Like, it's exactly right size. So, that's great. It doesn't give it great ventilation, but it's at least not inside of something. The modem almost always has got an overheat warning, but it doesn't seem to really bother the performance of the modem, so I don't really care. And I have taken the USB cable that runs out of the bellow box and it fits through the grommets in the back. So I ran the cable out of there and then just ran it down into this mesh pocket. And I just managed to find, is it, it might be a GoPro cable. Cause those cables, it's the only thing GoPro does good. Their cables are pretty good. Yeah, it is a GoPro cable. That is good quality. And then this modem just rides here. And like I said, it along with the audio system stays charged all day long. It doesn't even dip in its uh, battery capacity at all while it's sitting here. So that's one of my modems and one of my links to the internet. And then also in this bag is, I have a few of these, but this is the battery that I've got at the moment. I use Anker batteries. People say you shouldn't because they're not that great. Mine are fine. <laughs> I'm not going to say go out and buy Anker batteries to run all this stuff, but in my experience, they're good. I think there's better solutions out there now. One of the things about the bag that isn't great is there's not really a good way to put these batteries in and not have them bounce around. There are some of these stretchy, stre <laughs> stretchy container thingies, stretchy, stretchy bands. And what I had done is my wife generously stitched these in a way that is just the right size for a battery and it mostly holds them in place pretty good. They don't bounce around that much, but it would be nice if they were a little more secure but for a $50 bag, it's doing the job and I don't really ever have any problems. I think it's just more of a psychological thing for me. I want them to be more secure, <laughs> but practically speaking, it's fine. And the encoder sitting next to the battery the way it does hasn't caused me any grief at all. It's worked totally fine. So once the battery and the encoder are in there and set up, all you do is turn on the wireless system and then plug a USB cable into the battery and then plug the barrel adapter into the encoder and the system turns on. Now the system is all on and everything and it's gonna boot into Bellabox and then all that stuff is gonna work. I'm not gonna get into the software side setup of all of this, I'm just going to do hardware right now. And uh, maybe at one day I'll feel spunky, I'll explain the software stuff, but that's a whole nother bag. Um, I think that kind of covers everything that is going on inside of this part of the bag. 
I'm not uh, thinking there's anything else. A couple of little tips that I have. I take and I color coordinate my cables with colored zip ties. So the power cable for the Bella box, I put a red zip tie on each end of it. So it's really easy to be like, okay, red is power. And then the audio system has got a blue zip tie. And this blue zip tie, I know is the audio system and then where it's plugged in, it's easy. You don't have to like figure out where things are. I know that sounds like dumb, but these are the types of little tips that when I watch people's bag reviews or in instructions about how they set things up, I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. So I'm just gonna share those little things that I've got. And these little zip ties have made things really easy. So I just know like this modem is here. And I've actually got another case Cable that is wired for a secondary modem if I have one and it's just got white zip ties on it and it could ride in the other pocket. So that is the bag set up. And oh, another little, another little factoid, another tip is I have taken and put a zip tie on my cable for my uh, camera. And this zip tie is exactly where I like for where my cable is to come out of my bag. So I know that now I have the right amount of length and it's really easy for me to like know I can get my camera off my shoulder and it's like arm's length still works, but it's not like a cable that's like dangling down past my knees. So I just put a little marker on there and that solves that problem. And I also end up running this out of a box in the back of my motorcycle, it's, but I wanted to make it a little more okay with being pinched. <laughs> so I added some electrical tape right where I know the box is gonna pinch the cable. And it also lets me line everything up in that situation as well. So just like little markers to make like motions simpler for yourself are really handy. The bag does have a underside and this is where you can carry some things such as I will put my wallet inside of here and I carry a little rubber chicken. And uh, just in case, you know what I'm saying? And I've got a bag of a bunch of cables and the Allen wrenches that you would need to take this on and off if for some reason you had a cabling problem and you need to swap things out. And I've got spare cables for everything, the Allen wrenches, I've got some zip ties in here, just like a bunch of extra, you know, the things that might go bad while you're out streaming and you're like, okay, I need to troubleshoot something. And I actually carry a additional HDMI cable as well, just in case I have a long HDMI cable issue and I want to get that solved. Um, speaking of the cabling that goes from the bar, Bella box to my camera, I think it's two meters, but I'm not sure. That's usually like roughly around the area that most people need. Um, and that works out pretty good for me, even on the motorbike streams. Okay. And that's the underside. My wallet fits in there and I think I'm gonna to move to showing you guys how this all looks on me and how I use this stuff in a practical sense. All right, everybody says I look like the predator, kind of right. So what I've got here on my shoulder is a GoPro quick release system. Like I had mentioned, I use these because they're cheap and that's what I had. So on it goes and it's really easy to clip in and out. You don't even really have to look at it. It's very secure. And this little mount is pretty cheap. Hooks onto any backpack and works good. Again, maybe it's a little tall, but it functions and it gives me some flexibility because the camera itself is on a ball joint. So it gives me a lot of opportunity to move things into different positions and stuff, which I do do quite a bit because of streaming on the motorbike and streaming when I'm walking, I want this thing pointed in different directions sometimes. Turns out to be fairly handy. And the other thing that I would have when I am streaming is access to a tripod because periodically I'm gonna to wanna to be able to sit down and have this thing pointed at something or get this into like a selfie mode and give it a little bit of room away from my face. So I can take this and put it onto, again, GoPro mount, and then I can like have it kind of out like this. And I've got my cabling set up so that it's, again, the right distance for me without it being really long. I found that middle ground and marked it. So it gives me the opportunity to do this. And this tripod is like a little Ulanzi tripod. It also turns into a actual tripod so you can take it and set it down. And like if I'm eating or something, this keeps everything nice and stable. What I've done for the tripod to make it so that I can get to it on my bag easily is hung a carabiner on the back of my bag down here. And then the tripod just clips on and there it is. And it's just hanging there, I've got a tail, but it's easy to just get back at it if I wanted to flip over to selfie stick mode. And now I've got it back. So it's really easy to make this just out of my hands. 
which is something that I like to be able to do is get my hands free as quickly as I can. So that's basically what this all looks like when I'm walking around. And when I'm on a motorbike, I could, I could wear it on the motorbike and it would be totally fine. But what I usually do is I take this whole system and I put it into a top box in the back of my motorbike. And when I do that, I've got another GoPro mount that I wear on my bicep. And the camera just goes here. So it's like this when I'm on the motorbike. And the logic being that I don't want something on my helmet because if I got in an accident or something, I don't want the, it just seems weird to modify the helmet. I'm not into that. <laughs> so I also kind of like the view that this gives because it's like, uh, you can see the handlebars, but you can still see everything. And if something is happening to my side or something, I can just turn my arm like this and I can point the camera. So it gives me the opportunity to move things around like that really easy. I found that mounting it on my wrist didn't work very well because it put the camera too close to the mirrors and everything. And it was just like, it didn't, wasn't a good view. So to me, this is like the, um, the best spot for the type of motorbike view that I kind of want. Ideally, I would like a third person view, but I can't figure out how to make it up there without the camera wobbling too much. So this is where we landed. And wearing this thing isn't too bad. It's not great, but it's uh, it does gets the job done. And it is a pretty good thing um, regarding quality, I guess. I think it was like 10 bucks and it's only had to be repaired once. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it for like, I don't know, six months or something. So anyway, this is what it looks like when I am on the motorbike. And that I think is pretty much the entire setup. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, there is one more thing. I mentioned I have one modem in my bag and you could set, set up another modem and hardwire it and that would be ideal. But I, my second SIM card is just that I use for streaming is in my phone. So this is a Samsung S22 Ultra, which is overkill for streaming like this, but it's not overkill for streaming when you wanna stream from the phone, it works really good. But for a Bellabox streaming, you don't need something this powerful, but I use it as my, just like my daily driver phone, but it also controls Bellabox and it does my chat phone and all that stuff. And it also is sharing its SIM card through a wireless network that it creates like wireless bonding, wireless mobile hotspot, that's what it's called. And then the Bella box is able to pick that up and split the data signal between the hardwired modem that's back here and the phone's SIM system. So I'm using those two different networks, cellular networks, and it works very good in Japan. Like very, very good. <laughs> the only time I don't have signal is when there's like literally no signal and then I don't have signal. But other than that, it's like almost always on. It works wonderful. The last thing that I do is I use TTS all the time, but I don't want people to be able to hear TTS around me because I'm in Japan and it's rude to make noise. And I also don't want the people that are watching my stream to hear the TTS. I just don't, I'm not into it personally. That's just a preferential thing. But what I do is I usually just wear an, a wireless earbud in my ear and the wireless earbud just reads me TTS off of my chat app and I don't have my phone in my hands. So it's really nice to just be able to like, oh, okay, I can just go out and I can like be engaged in the conversation without having to like look at something all the time. So that's why I don't personally wear my phone on my wrist, which some people do, but I just find it to be just fine to do that. And every once in a while I have to pull my phone out and do something, but it's not a big deal. I mean, we're always pulling our phones out and doing stuff anyway, ain't no thing. And when I'm on my motorcycle, I just use the Bluetooth system that is built into the helmet and it is the one that's reading me TTS into my ears while I'm driving down the road. And that is the best way, in my opinion, to stay safe, because you shouldn't be riding and reading at the same time. All right, <laughs> I think that covers all the hardware. I don't think I missed anything, but if, I, if you have any questions, you can ask in places and uh, I can help answer. And I'll put links down below to some of the things that I think might be relevant for people if they're curious about buying them. Mostly the backpack. I think that's the one thing that most people are gonna be like, where'd you get that? <laughs> Everything else is easy to Google. The backpack's a little like, what the hell is that thing? <laughs> but anyway, if anybody else has uh, cool setups, I don't know if this is a cool setup, but you share it. It's cool to see this stuff. See y'all later.